Hello, you joined me in the greenhouse this morning on a cold and wet morning and the plan for today is to get these heated propagators and benches back in action. We should be starting off with this propagator here. It holds two standard size seed trays. And I find this ideal for starting off seeds which you've started in a little pot or something, maybe a quarter, even half tray. The only problem with this is that it, it is heated, although there's, there's no thermostatic control on, so it's either on or off. And it does create quite a few hot spots on the bottom. So what I've plan to do, I've already started there, I've thrown a bit of vermiculite in, I'll probably put about uh, 10 millimetres of vermiculite as a bed across the bottom and hopefully that will dissipate the heat a little bit better. Because the propagator isn't thermostatically controlled, I had a little look on the internet and I found one of these. What it is, you th your propagator plugs into your normal three pin socket and on the other end we have a, a temperature sensing probe if you can find it here it is and then you have this little box of tricks where you set the maximum and minimum temperatures so you could have it at like 15 and 18 so if it drops below 15 it switches on gets up to 18 it switches off and that's worked fine until now <laughs> I've come to switch it on the power light's on, but there's no LEDs on the digits to indicate what temperature it is. So uh, I've sent the guy an email who I purchased stuff. I got it in May last year, so it's not 12 months old yet. But in the meantime, I've had to order another one, a different variety this time, and I'm waiting for that to come in the post. You may remember from last year, we had that marvellous little find from uh, Poundland with this vermiculite. Well, I'm just putting it into use now. Somebody left a message, I can't remember who it was on one of my videos not long ago, saying that there was back in stock. So, if anybody's after any, Poundland's the place for five litres of vermiculite. Can't beat it. That's it all nice level, level now. I'm just going to damp down the surface with a little bit of water just to settle the dust and then I'll put it on for an hour or so just to see how it warms up so that's it, it's plugged in now just let the temperature warm up, I'll leave it on for an hour or two I'll put a little soil thermometer on the top and just keep an eye on it right, with that one underway we're ready to get this one going now this is the uh, this is it's about four foot by two foot. That's where the soil cable comes in, and it just does a zigzag up and down the box, and it conveniently ends there. I can lift this cable up quite easily, so I'll put a about a 25 mil an inch or so vermiculite in the bottom, and then try resting the cable on top. Well, that's the first instalment of the vermiculite. I've tried to get it as close as I can to the entry point to where the cable comes in down the bottom. What I will do now is give this a light sprinkling with water just to firm it down again and then we'll place the soil cables and lay it out in its final position. So that's the vermiculite dampened down and then we need to get the soil cables in position. That's not far off. Just slightly press that in to stop it moving any farther. So 
So what I'm going to plan on doing now is to top the rest of the box up, not completely to the top, you can just see the, I don't know if you can see this on the video, there's like a mark here where the original sand line was previously and I'll top that back up with vermiculite again. All told so far I've used uh, six bags of vermiculite which is 30 litres and I would guess I've got at least the same to get it up to the same level. And there we have it finished. All told, there was uh, 14 bags of vermiculite, so that's 70 litres. And that's more or less at the same level as it was when the sand was in. I'll get that one more final sprinkle with a watering can and flick the heat on. With February well underway now, it's time to start looking at what potatoes we're going to grow. Potatoes are roughly divided into three main groups, which would be a first early, a second early, and these being the main crop. The main criteria of that is the length of time it takes them for maturity to harvesting. First early is usually 10 to 12 weeks, uh, second early is anything 12 to 14, 16, and main crop. I work on 16 to 20 weeks, usually going the longer period so you get the bigger potatoes. Some of these actually lap over so you could use a first early and make it into a second. Second early can be done as a first. Obviously the earlier that you crop them, the smaller the potatoes will be. We're starting the potatoes off with a process called chitting, which is not necessarily needed to grow the potatoes. But what I find it does do is give you an early start knowing which way the sprouts are going to come out the spruts and then you can place the potato in the right orientation for the, the spruts to grow upwards. This variety I'm looking at here is Charlotte which will be one of my second earlies and uh, you can see already started cheating process with the number of spruts grown out. The, number, the more number of spruts you have the smaller the potato will be so if you're looking for big potatoes it's an idea to remove some of these but as these are, I'll leave them as they are. And all I do is store them upright. In my case, it's a 24 cell seed tray. And then let them do their own thing. You want to keep them in plenty of light, but not let the frost get on. If there's not enough light, the spruts will come out thin and very pale colour, which is not very good for growing. That's the first bag of potatoes put out for cheating and they've got some decent spruits already on them. I'll just run you through the three bags here that I've got which will be the varieties that I'm growing this season. First up is this one here, it's my first early and it's called Swift. This one does mature quite quickly and I shall be growing that in 30 litre tubs, probably three to four potatoes in one tub. The second early as we've already seen is called Charlotte that's a really good potato, lovely flavour, keeps well. I've got that bag there plus these here. Not sure if I'm going to be growing those yet in the ground or in tubs. We'll see a bit later on. And for the final main crop is my reliable favourite. It's the Sao Paulo range, the blight resistant. And that one is the Sao Paulo Mira, one of the family. I noticed from a few videos on YouTube recently of where the potato fairs have been there's been cut, there's some new varieties now which claim to be blight resistant and then not of the soil power family so it'll be interesting anybody growing those to see how they perform well the sun's going down and the light's starting to fade now the temperature's dropping before we finish off for today I'd like to share this with you uh, I mentioned in the previous episode that I'd sent for some new strawberry plants, well they've arrived. These are from uh, Marshall Seeds and the variety is called Cambridge Fable. There's 30 plants all told. And that's what they come like. There's 30 plants, I can't remember how much they were now, but the varieties I've got in there, I've 
I'm not sure what they are, but they're four years old now, and last year there was a bit struggling a little bit. But I'm not in a position yet to plant these out, so I'll probably put these into three inch pots, and in the meantime, I'll be clearing the bed out, ripping all the brambles, whatever's in there, taking all the old strawberry plants and burning them, and then compost it, put some weed membrane out of the top and planting these through. But that's for a later date. Sometimes tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to get these into pots. Mm -hmm.